Welcome, Darklings, to Season 3 of the Reign of Blood podcast. I'm Ember, one of your hosts, here to introduce you to the shadowy depths of what hopes to be our most sinister season yet. This season, your unholy trinity of organizers and hosts, Miss Kitten, Radically Dark, and myself, have entirely way too much fun with the Summer of Stabs, our 80s horror-themed series that promises to be both educational and thrilling. Our aim is to explore the macabre uh, beauty that lies in the shadowed, or maybe not so shadowed, spaces of desire. Leading up to Reign of Blood Nightfall, our advanced Halloween extravaganza, we'll be discussing topics such as embodied and informed consent, risk mitigation, and other helpful tips, ensuring that every prick, slice, and puncture is as thought through as it is sensational for you. We'll also continue interviewing Sharps enthusiasts from around the world to find out what makes the blood-loving heart tick. And maybe we'll talk Miss K into recording some more horror meditations for us. Join us as we explore the eerie, the edgy, and the exquisitely sharp. This is Reign of Blood, where the macabre meets the magnificent, and the only limit is your imagination, risk profile, and informed consent. Let the summer of stabs begin! But first, a content warning. This podcast is not suited for individuals who are not legal adults, are not interested in heavier BDSM practices, who are presently having severe mental or relationship health concerns, uh, or who do not already understand basic BDSM practices regarding consent, ethics, risk mitigation, etc. Topics may include things like mental health issues, social issues, injustice, blood and sharks, of course, medical trauma, uh, medical issues, trauma of various types, and more. Listener discretion is heavily advised. Welcome listeners. Today we have a special treat for you. With me is the illustrious Diane Killer and her partner Oscar coming in from Paris, France, I believe. So we'd like to extend a warm welcome to them both today. So we will be doing a little bit of translation work today um, due to my lack of speaking French. So this will be a little bit different than usual, but hopefully a lot of fun. So I wanted to start off with a couple of questions for Diane. Uh, so Diane, do you can you tell me a little bit about how your journey with needle play began, uh, and maybe what some of the early challenges you faced in that journey were? Uh. I was in a very bad way and I was with a submissive who was also in a very bad way. I just wanted to unbelish him with a few dozen needles, but we talked too long about our misfortune and I jab uh full um four hundred needles. In the end, I don't ever see, even seen. I understood what I had happened. It was a moment of exchange and catharsis, revelation, confessions, and forgetting for both of us. So exploring needles for you in that moment was a moment of catharsis and being able to step away from the difficult times you were having. Is that correct? Donc, de piquer les aiguilles, pour toi, c'était un moment de catharsis et puis de sortir du, du mauvais, du, de la mode yes. dans lequel tu étais à ce moment-là. Yes, it's a very bad moment, but after, it's a real revelation for me because it's very... Uh, um, liberation and communion with my model. Uh, it's, uh, it's just incredible with needle uh, when, when you can uh, make just uh, 
expression of you? Mm -hmm. It's it was it's not only uh, a pure uh, relation between uh, a sub and a dom, but it's really a connection between two people. Mm. So it's the connection part that was somewhat of a revelation in that sense. La connection que tu avais avec le soumis qui était une révélation pour toi dans, dans un certain sens quand tu as fait l'église. Yes, really. And uh, now this submissive male, it's my best friend, my best partner. Uh, we have a lot of secrets. Uh, ah. Here and me, it's a long story. It's my best model, my record model. Uh, wonderful. Thank you. So over time, it sounds like you've been doing this for a while here. Over time, how has kind of the way that you approach needle play and sharps evolved? Um, are there any specific milestones or maybe projects that have shaped your practice? I I want to embellish more and more, looking for technique, number, precision, accessory tool. And that's measured what the feeling of giving power to the other person by offering them a metal armor. That was very aesthetic, but also symbolic. It then became an increasingly complex issue. And I changed my protocol three or four times to come up with increasingly complex projects. I really like that. Uh, Oscar, you may have to translate this for me, but I really admire that kind of adaptive capacity or the ability to adapt there and be flexible. You said that you have a great capacity of adaptation and being flexible in your work. Yes, but it's in reality, it's in reality, it's too present. Uh, we have, we have. Mm -hmm. A hyper insensibility and uh, this moment uh, is uh, very dolor, very, very sad. And after it's very beautiful, very connection, it's very particular because it, it's not um classic practice <laughs> but uh it's a uh, it's really sincerely way with my partner and that yeah. makes a lot of sense yeah maybe uh maybe i can add something uh diane has learned everything by herself because when she started to to make needle play, there was no uh, school, no possibility to learn the needle play. So she started by herself. She learned everything by herself. So it was really a, a long process. Uh, it's why she mentioned she she has to change three or four times uh, the protocol. And now she is teaching because she. She thought it's very important to learn to other people. And she's part of a school. So now you have the possibility to learn needle play, but it's something that was not existing when she started needle play some years ago. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Thank you. I really appreciate that. And I appreciate that context there. Uh, so can you perhaps share a memorable, maybe, experience uh, that you're fond of, either one or both of you? Yes, uh, I set a world record, but it wasn't publicized because I was a sex worker and no one came forward to provide proof. But I stick 5,000 needed into a Norwegian at a tattoo convention. Even our service provider, we made 
us do this performance right pad us off. <laughs> we gave it our all. It lasted six hours and 15 minutes. No including the break. And I break it in apnea, hyper focused. I was, okay. it was viol violent to brace with another person to work in English on an unknown nobody from a cold country to do this performance. The experience can be seen on the Needle Play channel on YouTube and Twitter too. We we met we we met uh, the guy who came from Norway uh, one day before the the record. We just had some discussion with him uh, by uh, by WhatsApp, but it was the first time we met him, and it was the first time that uh, someone tried to to put five thousand needle on one on one on one body, so it was really something fantastic. It was really a great experience. Uh, I was part of the team who did the experience, and it's something that we will never forget. I would say so. I was actually unaware of this. Now I'm going to have to go find out more about this uh, because you just had me floored. Um, I did not know that this existed. Yeah, it was. It was. It was uh, initially. It was done to be recorded in uh, in the Guinness, but unfortunately, uh, it was not possible to be to be to register the record. But the in reality, uh, she did the five for the needles. So this is the fact. We have the record. We have the movie. We have everything. So even if it's not in the Guinness Book, uh, the the exp the explore was done. That's mm. fantastic. I will definitely have to look this up more because this was not in um, my <clears throat> this was not in my profile. So this is something I will have to go see now. Thank you. I would absolutely love to usually ask you more about the planning process behind that and things but i know we didn't talk about that before um to give you time to plan with translation for that as well so comment on avait comment ça avait été préparé tout ce qui la préparation qui avait eu pour ce pour ce record Mais comme elle nous avait pas posé la question à l'avance, elle pense qu'on a arrival <laughs> and more expensive. <laughs> it, no, it, it, we we can talk a little about uh, about uh, about it. Uh, how Diane is saying it was uh, the two or three weeks before the record. It was really horrible because we were quite uh, sure that we will not be able to do it. So it was a real nightmare for for both of us, and uh, but at the end we say okay if we want to if we want to try we will we will do our best and we will do everything to achieve the record and at the end it was possible to do it, but to start in. Such a such a huge uh, number of needles on a guy you never met before. It's quite, uh, I will say, comment on peut dire, uh, unrealistic. Yes, <laughs> it looks unrealistic before, <laughs> before, mm -hmm. but then it was really fantastic. Yes, but it was also uh, it was also a, a team effort because we were uh, seven people to support uh, Diane and uh, and the Norwegian guy. Yes. Yes. And we wow. start four in the morning. But <laughs> no, it's not a BDSM. It's just performance, bad mood, but not BDSM for me. Mm -hmm. mm. Certainly. But still, quite impressive, an impressive feat for you and your team. C'était vraiment impressionnant pour nous et pour l'équipe, Elvie. 
Yes, yes, really. And for me, it's uh, well, <laughs> because uh, uh, it's really difficult uh, concentration, uh, no respiration, no, 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 all <laughs> just a uh, needle, 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 uh, six hour. It's just uh, wow, <laughs> exhausting for sure. Yes. Really? <laughs> Ugh, my hands hurt simply thinking about it. <laughs> yes, and after my hand uh, don't uh, can don't move, uh, just after for one day, two day, no hand. <laughs> Finish. <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame it at all. But that's an incredible experience altogether. Thank you for sharing. So a lot of your play seems to be, again, very emotionally intense. Um, so how do you prepare those that you're playing with, um, your participants, for this psychological and emotional connective journey of your scenes that involve sharks? We've always rocked as BDSM family. Before the noodle, there was everything else, the benevolence, the friendships, uh, friendships as had already done uh, eighteen uh, percent of the work, but over time I noted stronger. We wanted a masterpiece, and we already literally trusted me just for the aesthetic and photographic results. Then when I'm asked to make a special connection before stitching, I get people talking, aunts. At the trade show, a young porn actress came to her stand an hour before her performance. She told me that she needed to expel a recent rape and that my medium made her want to violate herself instead. You, you can give ourselves time and discuss everything before un entering the needle, you know? It's very hard, but it's a uh, lot of time, a reality of personality we want to make hard needle on a body, sad body. Makes a lot of sense. Thank you. And I agree, friendships and having that trust beforehand goes a long way within within scenes. So, thank you so much. Yes, really. Yes, yes. And all my performer um, today, it's my old family, all my old BDSM family. But now in performance, I, je crois, je connais. Um, yeah, I know a differently person uh, for differently reason. And the discourse, the the discourse, it's all time difference, but uh, it's all time sincerely. The needle, it's not a, a easy medium. It's it's really hard. Uh, <laughs> it, it's it's. Uh, Really hard medium for hard expression of self, mm -hmm. I think. It's a very long process always yes. because if you if you want to make a masterpiece of uh, three hundred or five hundred needles, you need minimum one hour. But in general, it's two, three, four hours. Mm -hmm. So it's very a very long process for the for the for both people, and it's also a long time for discussion, to share opinion, to discuss, to have a, to have really a, a very nice feeling between the the two people, a, very, a good connection between the people. Yes. You have to talk. You have to discuss with the with the people with with the guy who is receiving the needles. 
you have to do mammification. <laughs> Yes, it's a uh, lovification. <laughs> the lovification. Yes. I love it. Thank you. So when you kind of reflect on your experiences, what are some of the most important lessons that you've learned through uh, sharps and needle play and it could be maybe about sharps or in general um indian mental tension the emotional dimension of the past the need to reveal oneself for me the guide and an ear before you are needle picker uh, you have to be extremely reasoning and supportive uh, coach I make connection on, on and my model uh, are loved and encouraged. I think the most important thing is that the other person does it for themselves before doing it for me. The priority is the pride, the past, the tech in the head and my techniques to sublimate it. I hear all the drama and all the need and I think we need to be mentally side by side to move forward with thousands of needles. I think it's important. My needle model has, I've become my family and my profession is my passion. They're the one who revealed it to me, it to me. My greatest lesson is generosity and listening, patience and understanding. The pain transformed. Uh, into gigantic uh, metal. metal painting. It's surely a reflection of what some people have told me over many, many long hours. Thank you. I especially like how you mentioned becoming a coach, a dedicated coach when working with people with sharps. Uh, it's, it resonates with me for reasons I won't go into, um, but that makes a lot of sense. Uh, and I think helps to define the role of a sharps top um, and even sharps bottoms really well. Elle dit que le, le fait que tu dis que tu dois être un coach, ça, elle trouve que c'est très important pour elle, c'est vraiment ça a du sens, et puis c'est nécessaire pour les, les deux personnes, pour le, surtout pour le bottom qui reçoit. Je vais répondre en français et il traduira pour vous. Uh, she, will, she, will, uh, she will answer in French and I will try to translate. Parce que okay. je ne sais pas en anglais. Mm. Uh, je comprends la part des soumis qui ont besoin d'être coachés, mais parfois aussi, avant des records ou des performances comme ça, moi aussi, j'aimerais être coachée parce que moi aussi, je m'inquiète pour l'autre et je m'inquiète aussi pour moi. Parce que des fois, je n'arrive pas à rassurer ma personne au lieu de rassurer l'autre. Elle comprend le sub, le sub, qui a besoin d'être coach, to be re, re, to to have someone who, who coach him before the, before the performance. But she said that sometimes she will also need someone to coach her because she's not always uh, so confident and someone she needs. It will be good if someone could help her. Yes. It's, it's difficult. <laughs> yes, because yes. she's afraid to do bad or not to do well and to be responsible for something very grave. She's afraid. Sometimes she is afraid not to be able to go up to the end or to do something wrong who could have uh, uh, a huge consequence on the on the people receiving the needles. For sure. Yes. And I think <laughs> having that emotional support and having spotters and people who can provide that as well, uh, and having that family kind of feeling, that Sharp's family, is so beneficial d'avoir un support émotionnel avec des gens qui sont proches et puis la, la, la famille de, des aiguilles comme tu disais ça peut ça peut aider et soutenir yes you know um, the submissive safe zone it's a currently term for other person i have just a question 
the safe zone for a dom. <laughs> when I can talk, <laughs> it's important for me. Comment est-ce qu'on peut dire en anglais Quand est-ce qu'on parle de la safe zone du dom Celui qui prend la responsabilité. It's exactly what she explained. Uh, we talk. Uh... We talk a lot about the safe zone of the submissive, but nobody is uh, looking of the safe zone of the domina. Yes. Or the master, because they also need a safe zone. But uh, it's something that it's, it's a kind of taboo that nobody wants to talk about it. Yes, because it's very important in uh, real discussions. Uh, the safe zone, submissive and dominant. Uh, when it's your responsibility it's it's not uh, fun <laughs> it's very serious <laughs> um surtout pour des records especially for records especially for records uh 200 no 2000 3000 4000 5000 it's really important and uh, for me it's an experience uh in my rock Uh, for me, it's for life. <laughs> I remember for life. For sure. And there's often a lot of stereotypes surrounding that and myths surrounding that, uh, which is one of the things I'm grateful you bring that up uh, because it is important uh, to keep that in mind that everyone involved in a scene deserves to feel safe and supported. Elle dit que c'est très important de toujours garder à l'esprit qu'il faut toujours garder la sécurité. Il faut que les personnes soient exactly. dans la sécurité yes. et soient safe et secure. Yes, yes, yes. Mm. it's true. Mm. Thank you. So, how would you say that your work with sharps has influenced maybe other areas of your life and artistic expression? I've been able to take a uh, part in workshop all over the world, express myself through event and community sharing about very serious concept, but also the opposite of everything. I was thinking, finding a new sexuality with my partner and sticking myself with him, connecting us through the same object artistically, I ended the notion of BDSM. I felt like I was using rays of color instead of needle. It's pretty and soft. It sparkles. And I forget the pain of myself. As a other model, I've shown me. I forgot about the act and the scribble, only the spiritual paths and the result. Thank you. So what will your future projects or goals um, with Sharps look like? Are there maybe any future techniques or uh, projects that you have coming up? I've already been to the USA and I'm aiming for Asia. I want to mix piercing and needle play for the face, genital and back and for the body to create a three-day canvas project using three threads, sorry, um, cellophane and ropes to create painting where the human being is at the center of the visual project, but where everything is stretched very far by its resistance. Pulling is the basic, but you can take it much further As an indole, it's like Photoshop, you know? The only limit is your imagination. It's a tool that can that can take you anyway. It has no limits. So let's talk about it in 10 years time. <laughs> okay. Gotcha. Well, I am excited to see what you come up with. <laughs> I'm excited too. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm afraid too <laughs> and hopefully we will be able to see more of your work and collaborate further with Reign of Blood because I for one am very excited to see some of your work uh, with us and 
hopefully folks can hear more of your journey and more of uh, the experiences that you have to share. Est-ce qu'elle est intéressée par ce que tu fais et puis elle pense que les auditeurs pourront aussi être intéressés par ton parcours. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. And I do believe you also just released your latest book in English as well, yes? Elle dit que tu viens de sortir yes. de nous ton livre en anglais. Yes, it's a trilogy. The first book, it's a um, biography on my work uh, sex worker. Uh, femdom and after uh, needle play and the term two uh, open start yeah, start start in two months and I translate uh, he two in yeah, English the, yes the, <laughs> the second the term two uh, will be published in French uh, in the next two months. So it should be ready in uh, in October, and it will be translated in English. And we think uh, we need six months for the translation. So certainly, the second book will be ready beginning of next year. Il faut dire yes. to, uh, next year, yes. Le tome 3, c'est un bouquin international de BDSM art autour de tous les artistes internationaux du BDSM and corse, the, uh, and femme, and the, and the, the tome 3 will be a kind of uh, dictionary of uh, international BDSM, but BDSM art. Uh, what Diane is, uh, is promoting is really what we call BDSM art. We want to show that BDSM could, can be artistic, can be beautiful. So even with something that it seems to be dangerous or painful, you can have really aesthetic, you can have beautiful things, you can you can make art with needles and with uh, different uh, BDSM tools. With, with a lot of picture. It's a book picture. <laughs> ah, gotcha. So it's a, a, a photo book of a lot of your work as well. Yes. Yes, but uh, not around the world. Lot of artists of BDSM, lot of picture, and it's a, a big, big project for the gotcha. uh, free time. Yes, yes, free time. Mm. Amazing. So, if folks wanted to follow you on social media, where could they do so? Where they can follow me on Twitter. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter. Uh, Arubaz, Diane Killer, uh, Instagram, uh, not Diane Killer because more strike with my practice, <laughs> but uh, now it's Storm All Society uh, and after uh, Fat Life. Mm. On YouTube, you can uh, show the needle records with needle play channel. Uh, for this record of uh, 5,000 needle, and uh, it's all. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, thank you both so much for taking the time to chat uh, with me. Also on the website of Diane Killer. She oh, yes. DianeKiller.com. <laughs> wonderful. Thank you both so much. It has been wonderful to connect with you both. Thank you too. Thank you for your interesting and your sympathy, really. Well, folks, again, this has been Diane Killer and Oscar. Again, be sure to check out our Summer of Stab series if you enjoy all things pretty and sharp. We did earlier today have Pretty Sadistic Sharps as a class, which is now available on the Patreon series. And we have um, I believe several different skin bondage classes coming up as well that are all related to all things pretty and stabby and evil. So we'll look forward to things as we gear up for nightfall. This is Ember Solaris and we will see you soon.